everybody. So my name is Wesley. I use they, them pronouns. And today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about pen plotters and some fun things that I've done with pen plotters. Uh, so you might be asking yourself, what is a pen plotter? Uh, and in the 80s, before printers really worked very well at all, uh, as if they work well today, uh, and you wanted to print an image, what you would do is you'd use a little robot that would take a pen, and it could move the pen in two directions, and it could lift it up and put it down, and maybe it could select some other pens. Uh, this was just how you would make graphics. Uh, so if you were an engineer and you wanted to uh, have drafting drawings, uh, or if you're a business person and you wanted to give project uh, presentations on your overhead transparencies, uh, this is how you would do it. Um, so uh, why would you do it? That's, that's the reason. Um, so of course, successful presentations use graphics. Uh, so this is, uh, this is from the uh, HP Colorflow pen plotter. One thing I really like about this image, you'll notice on the chart on the right, we're projecting far into the future of the year 1987. <laughs> um, so I bought this pen plotter, and then I went looking for documentation. Uh, and one thing that I found was the sales guide for this plotter. Uh, you can see it advertised itself as quality presentations for business leaders. Uh, very fancy. Um, so. Uh, I found you know, the, the instructions for how to sell this plotter. Uh, and you know, so I, I do make presentations. Uh, you know, here I am. Uh, I don't use an overhead projector, uh, but I do want to make better presentations. So two out of three. It's, it's starting to look like I should, I should buy this plotter. Um, and then uh, in the secrets to closing, uh, they say to ask if I have a presentation upcoming in the next few weeks. Here I am. Um, <laughs> And then finally, my, my favorite is uh, you only pay for quality once. So who knows? Could be using this plotter in the year 2020. Um, so now that I've bought this plotter, how do I actually use it? Uh, luckily, the manual has some more instructions. They have this, this handy little chart. Uh, so you take a, a software package on a floppy disk or uh, a piece of paper with a, a graphics program on it. You, you stick that into your computer, and then out the squiggly little cable. I think this bend in the cable is very important. Uh, it goes into the plotter, and then pictures come out. Uh, so what do these HPGL instructions actually look like? Uh, so here's a pretty simple program that we'll walk through. Uh, so first, we initialize the plotter. That's what the IN is. And then select the first pen. Uh, then we'll move the pen to the location 1,000, 1,000. We'll put the pen down. Uh, we'll move the pen around more. You know, we're drawing a little square. Uh, and finally, pick the pen up so it doesn't bleed all over the paper. Now, so this is great. We're off drawn squares all over the place. Everything's good. Uh, but there's actually a problem. So I go back, and I look at the manual again. Uh, we can see I have the HP Color Pro on the right there. Uh, and the buffer size is 60 bytes. Uh, so if you look at this program, this program is 86 bytes long. Uh, so these last 26 bytes are, are not having a good time, not making it to the plotter. Uh, so that's a problem. You know, I go back to the salesperson. I say, hey, I can't even draw a square. What am I supposed to do with this plotter? Uh, but he tells me, don't worry about it. I have the perfect solution for you. All you have to do is just buy the Hewlett Packard graphics expansion cartridge. Uh, and this will snap into the bottom of your plotter. It'll give you a luxurious 1,024 bytes. What more could you need? You, know, you can draw 10 squares that way. <laughs> It'll be perfect. Uh, it turns out that the graphics expansion cartridge is a little bit hard to come by these days. Uh, so I needed to go and find a different solution. Uh, so what I did was I said, well, we have all of these commands. And after each command, uh, I can say OA. And what OA does is it tells the plotter, output the current position of the pen, uh, and just let me read it back. So now what I can do is I can send the first command, and I can wait until I see a response. And that'll tell me that the plotter has finished taking this command, and I can send the next one. And I'll send each one in a row. I'll be able to plot all sorts of pretty pictures. So we figured out a solution. Don't even need to buy the, the graphics expansion cartridge. We can do it all on our own. Um, so now we're, we're in business. We're making all sorts of pretty pictures, you know, plotting all kinds of nice things. Um, and uh, most importantly, you know, making some very serious presentations. Uh, you know, all sorts of, of serious stuff. Uh, 
so this is, I was, I was showing my friends all of this, and uh, they asked me, uh, oh, this is cool. Could you hook up a mouse to it? So can you, can you take a mouse and then use a computer mouse to draw on the plotter? And I thought about this for a moment. And I was like, that shouldn't be too hard. Uh, so I spent about an hour. I went in and typed up the code. Uh, and then we, we had great fun playing around with it. Um, and then, of course, this opens up the possibility for all sorts of interesting plotter games. Uh, so the first idea that I had was I'll have the plotter generate a maze for you. And it'll just draw out a maze. And then you can, you can go in with the mouse, uh, go through the maze, and, and solve it. So this was a little prototype of that. Um, it turns out that just going through a maze isn't that much fun. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's when you're a kid and you're, you need something to do. But it didn't really cut it for me. Uh, so what I decided to do instead uh, was make Flappy Bird on the pen plotter. So what this will do is it'll go and you know, draw out a level with randomized pipes and, and everything like that. Um, and then once it's finished drawing out this level, you can go and play Flappy Bird on your vintage pen plotter. <laughs> so it draws a little explosion when you, when you don't make it. Uh, and then when you finally do, draws a little birdie for you. Uh, just as a <laughs> um, so oh, this is a different one that we won't play. So uh, that was lots of fun. Uh, but there's one problem, which is if you've played Flappy Bird, you know it goes on forever, right? Uh, but my plotter only is, is 8 and a half by 11, which is not really a, a fun Flappy Bird size. Uh, so what can we do about this? Well, it turns out that if you try to draw past 11 inches, the plotter just won't let you do that. So I was thinking about how to solve this problem. Uh, and uh, the thing that I could think of was, well, I can just take apart the plotter and you know, go in and fix it myself. So luckily, the plotter actually comes with super nice documentation. So for instance, they have all these beautiful line drawings and exploded diagrams. Um, they also have circuit diagrams for the entire thing. This is the whole logic board for the plotter. So you can take it apart and know what every piece is. Um, and so the ROM is on here. This is the little chip that holds all of the code that decides that you can't draw past 11 inches. Um, this is a 8051 system, which is a pretty nice little architecture. Uh, so then I can you know, take apart my plotter, uh, hook up my logic analyzer to it, uh, it turns out that doing this with a logic analyzer is a pain in the ass. So <laughs> what you can do instead is just desolder the chip uh, and then dump the ROM. And you have a bunch of assembly. Right? You have 16 kilobytes of this stuff. Uh, and so at this point, uh, I ran out of time to reverse engineer this. So if you are interested in 8051 <laughs> assembly and vintage hardware and uh, are enterprising, I have the ROM up on GitHub. Uh, and I am uh, looking forward to, to diving into it more. Um, but this is, this is about how far I got. Uh, and I just wanted to, before I leave, talk a little bit about sort of uh, why I did this and why I think this is interesting, uh, which is that basically uh, when I was programming just for fun and not as a job, I really enjoyed it. And then programming became my profession. And uh, you know, I was writing code at work to make a bunch of executives richer and pay my rent. Uh, and that just wasn't that fun. And then that sucked a lot of the joy out of programming in my personal life. Uh, and the way that I finally got back into it was just making art and making things that are stupid and pointless and that make people smile. Um, and this project has been really great for uh, you know, bringing a little bit of joy into people's lives and surprise. Uh, and finally, if you would like to play Plotty Bird, uh, I'm going to be giving a demo of it in the break after this block of sections down there. I have the plotter here. Uh, and then one more note is I came here from New York City, and I do not want to bring this plotter back. So if you would like me to practice my sales pitch that I have learned <laughs> expertly from this manual, please do come talk to me after the talk. Thank you.